you're recording sync uh, with a with a with a personal mic, do not use the mic in the camera. It isn't good enough. You can't get close enough, and it's the worst kind of amateur thing to do. Always have an external mic. And if you use if you use a radio mic, it's not a safety issue. You put the you put the radio mic on your person. You put the transmitter in their pocket. You put the receiver on the hot shoe here, and cable it into the camera. And then you have to be in, in external. <coughs> and these are your controls here. You want to be looking for something like half scale. Now I haven't got a I haven't got one with me at the moment, so we can. Uh, the internal mic for now. You can see there the internal mic look is uh, peaking about I suppose three quarters of the scale. Um, with digital systems you can afford to record at a lower level. In the old days you would have had noise problems but with the digital well, you always had that kind of you always had to kind of occupy that window between um, Having the le the level high enough to avoid any, a noisy signal, but not having it so high that it distorts it. Uh, distortion is obviously very difficult to get rid of. Once you've got it, it's almost impossible. So um, now we've got digital systems, we can back off a little bit and work at a slightly lower level, knowing that the noise pr problem isn't isn't as great. So um, that's probably okay. I might I might knock that back a little bit actually. Up a level like that if I had a personal mic on there. But it's, it's not too bad. It's in the right ballpark, as I say. Okay, looking at the side of the camera here, you can tell as I turn it there, you can tell that we're in auto something, can't you? Because you can see a wheel moving on its own. What could that possibly be? Well, we've got several auto, auto positions you can be in. And if the iris is in auto, it will find its own exposure. So um, if we were to. Um, you can see that it's looking at something that's black there, so it's kind of opened up quite a bit. If I whack that round to the window, so that's f2.8, if I whack that round to the window and uh, fill the camera with light, uh, the exposure is now going to f16, which is about the full, kind of the full range of a SLR, you know, ordinary bog standard SLR camera, isn't it? You got 2.8 at the at the op at the very open end and f16 sometimes f22 at the other so that's the difference between the contrast ratio looking that way and looking that way <laughs> don't shoot in auto iris there's nothing wrong with actually setting your iris in auto it's not bad it's not quite as good as doing it um, manually but if you if you um, if you look uh, out there and you see and it says f16 you can then knock it into manual this is a switch to do it here I'll turn it around so everybody can see it. That's the switch I've just... <coughs> sorry, <laughs> you're chasing me around. <laughs> I do apologise. It's this, it's this little switch here. It, it, if you set it to auto first of all and get a reading and then knock it into manual, you'll find that uh, it'll stay. And now you can see we're looking at a fairly murky shot there. Okay? Fairly murky. Simply because... Um, it's exposed for looking that way. It needs to be on 2.8. So if we go into manual, uh, sorry, if we went into auto, first of all, and there it is, and it's uh, telling us uh, 5.6 is correct for that shot, and we can knock it back into manual again. Don't record in auto. It makes it impossible to edit virtually. Somebody, if you've got a scene and somebody walks through the scene with a white shirt on or something, and the camera stops down. It's almost impossible to uh, to chase that up and down. And you don't want to be doing that. Nothing's impossible, is it, in editing? But I mean, not absolutely. But you don't want all that hassle. Um, what else have we got? We've got uh, focus, and focus is um, almost out of con out of sight here. It's at the bottom here. Um, that's in auto at the moment. Um, again, you can put that into manual. Uh, you've also got full manual focus here, which which is um, achieved by sliding this. That's proper proper manual focus. You've got also got a kind of halfway house arrangement with um, with that in that position, which gives you this control of this um, of that with 
this switch here, and it's a co currently in manual. And so if we were to uh, find some social focus, it's slightly out there, isn't it? If we were to put that into manual, well, there it is, it sharpened it up there, go back to manual again, and there you are. So I think if you're an early filmmaker that is struggling to understand the camera, uh, I would uh, I would use it in, in this position, the focus in this position, AF MF, uh, auto focus, manual focus position, and use the auto uh, uh, use the auto to get your focus. But again, don't record in auto focus because what will happen is <coughs> walk through the shot and the camera will hunt. It'll look for something bright to focus on. You know, a car headlights coming through. You know, it'll go, it'll focus on those, and it'll throw your sub subject out of focus, and that's again impossible to correct um, in the edit. Uh, white balance is the only other thing. Oh, there's gain here. You, you, you should always be <coughs> working in low gain. Uh, it's only in very low light conditions you should be thinking about um, if, about um, putting a bit of extra gain in. And don't put much, because it does produce noise. And the other thing is white balance. <coughs> the other thing to think about is the three main things, exposure, focus, and white balance. White balance is done simply by pointing the... Let me go to the register, let me come back, the kitchen back, the interesting back. Uh, about the only piece of clean paper I've got on The important thing about white balance is you white balance in the light that you're going to be shooting in. So, if you're shooting someone against that wall over there, then the best thing you can do is to ask that person to hold the white, the white uh, card, and then you fill the frame with it. It's quite simple to do. You fill the frame with it. Um, switch underneath the zoom which makes this active okay so to do with your white balance you might not want to move the camera from here I'll just hold, ask you to hold that there I don't know whether I can fill the frame I should be able to fill the frame with it from there it's about 14 to 1 this zoom okay. yeah well it's almost full almost full is good because you could turn it through uh, into landscape you make it even easier for me okay so there we are uh, you need to make sure it's exposed properly, of course, and you can, again, you can do that by using the uh, auto manual. You might put a bit more wick into it. Test it, actually. I think there's a bit of oil there. Anyway, Canon knows best. So we've exposed the white card correctly. We've selected uh, either of these, A or B, white balance there, and pressed the button, which is just around the front here. It's the first button there, okay? Also, white balance executing, it says, and it says it's okay, and the colour temperature in here tells me it's 48,000, which is typical of uh, fluorescence. So now we're correctly white balanced, everything should be the right colour. I think it's actually slightly below that, isn't it, in terms of um, exposure, so let's just... about right to me, but who knows. You've got other little additional things like zebra bars you can you can check on. The zebra bars will tell you uh, when something is over muddy. See some zebra bars come up there. <coughs> the is I'm not absolutely sure what they're set to because I've only just got picked this camera up. It's a brand new camera. It's one I've never operated before. It's an EX1R which we which we, uh, we decided to buy in the summer. Um, we also got some EX3s. I know the EX3 reads really well, but the EX1R I've never operated. However, it doesn't look 